Hello, welcome to this September edition of Local Image coming to you from Matamidi and Willerney. People here know well the unique border they have that cuts between several establishments. In fact, on the website for the dugout bar, they list their location as being in Willermedi because the border between the two communities cuts a diagonal right through the bar. Regardless of which city your foot is in, there are plenty of reasons to come here, especially if you're thirsty and hungry. From seafood or steak and malts and burgers to Italian fare, there's something here to please your taste buds. And if Scandinavian fare with a Vikings flair piques your interest, then the new Valhalla Nordic Smoke and Ale House, located on the Willerney side of the border, is open and ready to serve you or your inner Viking. The fallen in battle, the, the, the warriors that are slain in battle, half of them are taken to Valhalla to spend the rest of their days with Odin. Uh, drinking and carousing and fighting and um, just having a good time. We're looking at the Scandinavian Viking Empire and thought how fun it would be to create a blend of Scandinavian fare with Northern European food, all done in a Minnesota comfort food fashion. Um, well, we're, we're trying to do some fun twists on some real traditional things like uh, gravlax, which would be kind of a cured Norwegian salmon. Um, we're, we're using like a, a Scandinavian liqueur, akavi, that's uh, paired with some salts and sugars and fresh dill and, and it just kind of cures and soaks into the meat and uh, makes for a really fun appetizer. It's a, it's a real staple in Norwegian culture um, all the way to, you know, just good homemade Swedish meatballs, um, different types of roast beef and potatoes and a party Minnesota fare as well. When he thought about Scandinavia and the Vikings in general, the theme that came to him was Valhalla, which means similar terms, the word means heaven in some sense, and thought that it was a good overall view of uh, the theme he wanted to create with the, with the menu that he built. Um, if you look back through some dark times in history, uh, one might say that beer saved the world. Um, they're going through many times where the water would have killed anybody and during the plague, um, things like that. If you didn't boil the water or if you weren't drinking wort or beer of some sort, you might not survive. Yeah, this bar is uh, actually has 80 taps, but we have 40 different flavors on tap. They're mirrored on both sides so that you can sit on either side of the bar and see our full offering. And we aim to expand and finish the concept by building a brewery where we'll have our own ales on tap and available here. We're one of the few places around that offer meads and a variety thereof with um, flavor to them, um, whether it's a raspberry flavored mead. Um, we've got a really unique one that's imported from Denmark called Viking's Blood, um, which has been a big popular one, and it's something that you don't see at a lot of places. Um, not a lot of bars carry meads. Mead is a style of wine that is made from fermented honey instead of grapes. So that would have been the, the sweetener of choice in Scandinavia, and that's how they figured out how to make an alcoholic beverage in uh, ancient Viking times. Well, when you look at the restaurant choices that most people have today, a lot of, the large percentage of it is going to be corporate restaurants that have the same theme um, and there's multiple in the same area. By giving our restaurants a theme, we get to pull from different regions in the world where we can have fun and experiment and give people a different version that truly is unique and it makes us stand out as an original family business. Well, uh, extensive research, um, not to overcomplicate anything, but um, knowing that Nordic food is, is good comfort food and not to confuse it with some new Nordic that is, you know, screaming to be the, the fanciest thing you've ever seen, but, but uh, giving people something that's good and recognizable and, and comforting and hearty to eat in these colder Minnesota months. Take one of the shields down from the wall and I'm ready for battle. We're preparing for battle, yes. Fun is the name of the game for us. Though. And if we can 
pull some of that fun history into the culture of the food that we're trying to, to serve and give people some, something fun in the environment that they come in to dine. As you know, communities like Matamidi and Willerney, which are situated on the southeast side of White Bear Lake, take their water quality and quantity issues very seriously. And so does the Ramsey Washington Metro Watershed District, which is offering homeowners help with water issues through a special grants program, as I learned during this local image interview. We're at the home of Paul Gardner and I have with me Paige Alberg, who's with the Ramsey Washington Water Metro Watershed District. Yes. Did I get that right? Yes. And we're here today because there's a very special program available to folks, which Paul has taken advantage of, and it regards these beautiful rain gardens, right? Why don't you tell us what you guys have going on at the sure. district there? Sure. Yeah, so we have a BMP incentive program, or a cost share program, where we work with homeowners in our watershed district to fund water quality projects such as rain gardens or porous pavement parking or driveways and um, basically things like that things that will capture roof runoff street runoff driveway runoff and help clean that before it runs into our water bodies okay and so paul how long have you had your rain garden here well this is just uh, the first full year that we've had the rain garden and it was the culmination of a bunch of uh, home projects we had to do uh, which involved digging up our front yard and I thought, well, if we're going to do it uh, all the way, let me do some research. <laughs> and I discovered that the Ramsey Conservation District does some technical assistance, and the Ramsey Washington Metro Watershed District uh, does the financial assistance, the, the partial reimbursement or cost share, to help make this kind of project possible. So this took some of our lawn out of commission. It solved a drainage problem to keep water out of my basement, and it also is taking water right here off the street from the cul-de-sac once we have a curb we have to put in and it'll take water into the, uh, the lower rain garden. Yeah. The water will be sucked up by native plants and uh, keep water out of my basement. Why mm -hmm. was that, uh, obviously it solved a, a real problem that you were having, but why on top of that is it so important to you to, to do this kind of a project? Um, it's important to you for many reasons, I imagine. Yeah, it was both economic and environmental. I'm, I consider myself an environmentalist. I've done environmental work for, for work for many years. Uh, but I also can use a spreadsheet too. I wanted to make sure that uh, something that we could do that was uh, helping clean up our lakes was also something that we could afford and that would also uh, add some value to our home and uh, have some return on investment or at least reduce our risk for future flooding. Right, and right. So it, it paid off in many ways. And why don't you tell us, Paige, how the program works and kind of what the options might be for folks interested. Yeah, so we, as Paul said, we partner with the Ramsey Conservation District in Ramsey County, and we also have a portion of our district in Washington County. So we work with Washington County for technical assistance. So a homeowner can call us and we'll set them up with either conservation district and their technical designer comes out. We'll do a site visit with the homeowner, talk about any issues, like Paul mentioned, flooding in the basement, if they have any issues on site and how we can help with that. And also how we can help achieve our goals by taking street runoff, or you know where the most runoff comes so we look at what will work for them whether it be a rain garden or native planting area and then our technical designer puts a plan together for them and then the homeowner goes through we assist with helping them find a contractor that will do the work and do site inspections throughout the process um, they can apply for uh, assistance with the funding which mm -hmm. is we cover 50 to 75 percent wow. of the project cost uh, up to twenty five hundred dollars so okay. it's pretty substantial um, assistance for something like this. It's a reimbursement so the homeowner would pay for the project up front and then once we sign off on it then we reimburse them that payment for the project. And so these rain gardens seem to be popping up more and more. Um, it seems like it's becoming a much more successful mm -hmm. program. How, how long ago did this idea start and how, how well has it been going? Yeah, well our cost share program started in 2006. Uh, some cities had been doing rain gardens, I don't know exactly when they yeah, started, right. but it's been many years now. Uh, some in Maplewood were put in like early 2000s, so they're getting out there, the word's out there. Um, people, you know, want to minimize the area they have to mow as well as help clean up water. 
Uh, so we've had yeah, our program since 2006, and we've helped um, hundreds of residents within our district put these in. Okay. Yeah. Paul, talk a little bit about kind of the maintenance. Has this been more work, less work? What kind of maintenance do you have to do? And, and describe what's in your garden here. Sure. Uh, well, I'm no botanist, so I can't tell you about <laughs> plants. Uh, but um, we uh, have a couple of things going on here. Uh, you know, for the, one thing you can't really see from here is that the, the downspouts in the front of the house all feed into the upper lane garden and then go into the lower one. Uh, but it serves a couple of purposes. Uh, it actually reduces a little bit of maintenance because I'm not having to clean out my basement. <laughs> yes. Uh, last uh, spring in April 2014, we had heavy snow melt and then a lot of rain all at the same time. So a lot of people had water in the basement. Our sump pump failed. And then uh, our insurance company said, you know, you need to figure out uh, what the source of your problem is for all this water in the foundation. And so we put in a sump pump with a backup. We got wider gutters uh, with a guard on it so no debris was uh, causing sure. cascading water going into the foundation. But with the, uh, the downspouts feeding into the rain garden, that actually saves us a whole lot of trouble. I can, we can go away for a few days and not worry that something is gonna go wrong with the drainage. And in fact, since we've put this in, uh, there isn't really a whole lot of water that's going into our sump system. There's still some, right? Uh, but it just has reduced uh, the amount of flow that's going in there. So that's definitely positive for maintaining the structural integrity of the house for maintenance. Sure. Uh, we do have to, according to the agreement with the watershed district in exchange for the partial funding, we do have to maintain the rain garden to make sure that it's uh, free of debris, that the, the soon to be made curb cut will be free uh, to still take water into it. Uh, we maintain the plants. We'd like to put in some more native plants to suck up more of the nutrients in the water. So uh, that'll be kind of fun. And my wife really enjoys the part about uh, monitoring and maintaining the plants. Sure, So sure. we were doing some of that anyway. It's just in a little more orderly fashion. Gotcha. And it serves a, a, a water uh, drainage and treatment function okay. at the same time. Well, Paige, is this a good time of year for folks to check into these programs and where can they find more information? Yeah, it is an excellent time of year. We still have funding available. Um, so all the information is on our website. Uh, you can Google Ramsey Washington Metro Watershed District or it's www.rwmwd.org and it's under our BMP incentive program and uh, it's a good time of year to put these projects in. We're still getting a lot of rain. Uh, we do a lot of plantings until sure. you know mid-October so that's okay. uh, still good. The plants have a good survival rate. Um, you know if you plant them in the fall they'll survive in the winter. We like to use native plants mm -hmm. um, so they can tolerate our weather conditions. They come and back every year yes. too then, yes. right? Yes. We yep. actually took many plants that we had growing anyway in another raised bed over here and planted them in October, I think it was. Yeah. And they all seem to have survived. Nice, nice. Well, yeah. your rain garden caught all our rain over the last couple of days, which is nice. So, well, thanks for sharing the information and I'm sure folks will want to check out this program. Lots of options for people and, and uh, love the garden. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Terry and Ann Kellerman own and operate Kellerman's Event Center in downtown White Bear Lake. We featured the opening of Kellerman's three years ago. If you've seen it, then you know how truly unique it is thanks to the craftsmanship of this hardworking duo. Now the Kellerman's creative wheels have turned towards the addition of a craft cocktail lounge inside this very old building. Its unique look is enough to bring you in for a look but the Kellermans are confident that the craft cocktails will keep you coming back to the alchemist. Like a lot of uh, fresh cantaloupe with big thin strips of uh, prosciutto. A little salty, a little sweet, you know. I always like to think of the twist like that. It's just like a, a lock of hair. And this one, I just uh, pre-batch a big batch of Negroni and then we top it with a, uh, a lemon foam. I really don't like mounting fruit on the rim. Boom, there you go. The drinks are just one part of the whole thing, and it's about the whole experience, you know? And it's like, Terry built this bar. He's like been a dream of his for three years. You know. For the Kellermans, drink maker master Johnny Michaels' scientist-like approach to mixing cocktails is a perfect match considering the practice of alchemy is to take something ordinary and turn it into something extraordinary. 
Most of the design is, is what I did. Uh, designing it, I mean, obviously we had restrictions because of the old buildings that we're in. And working with the 1906 building and the 1922 building and the 19, I don't even know what year that part was built. And the 52 edition that's on here and we had to make it all fit together and look like it was some kind of a cohesive steampunk deal. So what is steampunk, you might ask? There are various styles of it, but an apt description, according to Terry, is what the past would look like if the future happens sooner. Terry's favorite example draws from the film 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, based on the novel by Jules Verne. Well, it's got industrial steampunk, isn't it? Ours? Industrial touches on it, but steampunk goes a few steps further, off into like Never Never Land. I mean, it's uh, it's fantasy. There's a lot of fantasy and a lot of time travel. There's uh, a lot of other elements to it. We should have the time machine down. We may bring the time machine down eventually, yeah. The good news is you don't need a time machine to transport you next door into the event center, where brides and grooms alike have been drawn to Terry's handiwork in what's otherwise known as the men's bathroom. I got to go a little crazy with the steampunk. It's on the dark side, but boy, I tell you, the brides go in there. We get we have women go in there all the time, and um, they love it. They they're they're mad because the women's isn't like that. They want it. <laughs> Helping to keep the brides happy while also keeping the bars stocked and staffed is the job of Kristen Corrigan. So we want to make sure we have everything ready for outside. It's so cool when I'm the bar manager and they come through the back door for a wedding, and the guests are like. Wow, wow, what an amazing place. And I get the same reaction when I tell people about the alchemist or show them the alchemist. But the visions that they have for what this has become, um, not only the event center in three years, I mean, who does that? Who creates a, such a successful event center in three years? A short time indeed, but for Johnny, who has a long and respected career in bartending in venues he helped to set up, including La Belle Vie in Minneapolis, the alchemist brought together just the right ingredients to lure him out of the big city and into the suburbs. When I saw what was going on here, I'm like, wow, this is what you hold out for, you know. Um, this, this could be really cool, and to have an independent person like put all their chips down their savings to build they didn't go in cheap you know to build a unique special place and more than the, what was actually here it was just like talking to Terry you know and like I got a feel for what he's all about you know and we both share the same thing and that you know constant tinkering and adding on little things, you know? Some of the little things found inside the Alchemist are quite big and fit perfectly into Terry's steampunk wheelhouse. My thing is these, these wheels. <laughs> uh, they're gears out of the a uh, Pillsbury A-Mill in Minneapolis. It went into service in 1881 and ran the largest mill in uh, the world. For 50 years. In searching for elements for the bar, Terry counts Johnny as one of his best finds. He's going to fit in here real well. Definitely one of a kind. <laughs> yeah, for <laughs> that's what I should have mentioned. The different art pieces. He's one. <laughs> I'm squeezing around the hand. And if it goes in the cup, it goes in. If not, it goes you know, he he wrote this book, North Star Cocktails. I tried to duplicate some of these, and I just couldn't couldn't make them. So I had to go find Johnny and hire him. <laughs> they also hired a muralist whose work is displayed not far from where Johnny crafts his cocktails. I've never painted a mural in a bathroom. I think right away, like I seemed to understand what they were going for. So I threw in a lot of. Um, gears and pulleys and, and pipes and um, sort of steampunk ideas. And then the, the bartender kind of represents Johnny. And it's sort of the alchemy theme in it as well. So he's creating a, a cocktail over a, a Bunsen burner. And there's You know, when people come to the bar, a lot of times they won't even look at the, uh, at the drink list. They'll just say, Make me your best drink. And I'm like, well, my best drink is actually whatever's gonna make you the most happy. Keeping all guests happy is a top priority for Johnny, including guests who prefer their cocktails alcohol-free. I put a lot of work into, uh, I used to call them refreshments, alcohol-free. 
some real sophisticated looking drinks. I think a lot of times that can be a difference maker. Three people drink, one doesn't, and they end up picking maybe your place because you've gone through the extra trouble of providing that other person like, uh, you know, options. So that's the, that's the I'm all excited about going all in and trying as hard as I can and hopefully they'll like what we do and yeah this I like this town. Well I think White Bear Lake's growing up I mean it's it's becoming a, a destination for Twin Cities people to come come out here. I've already told a lot of friends about this um, we're all kind of excited to come back here. When they choose us that's a real honor you know we're like stewards of people's good time. How was your okay. Great. Would you like The Alchemist will offer some limited appetizer options to go along with those tasty drinks and they hope to add live music to the venue in the months ahead. Now, someone who knows how music can move people to do great things has done just that himself. I caught up with Noah Alexander, lead vocals of the Plot Hounds, during a visit to the Minnesota Military Family Tribute on the state capitol grounds for this Local Image interview. So Noah, um, some of our viewers may remember meeting you about a year ago when your band, the Plot Hounds, was performing for the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation Benefit, which was the Breathe Easy Music Festival. Yes. And we're catching up with you again because you just did another benefit, one that you coordinated for a very special cause. Can you tell us about it? It relates to why we're here today at this uh, tribute. Yeah, absolutely. We just uh, just wrapped up the what is now a third annual Country Rock for a Cause. And it was a benefit festival that my wife and I really put together to, to support the Minnesota Military Family Foundation. And what does that foundation do uh, for our military families? Yeah, it, it's quite a bit. Um, you know, I think, you know, everyone's first look is to support the troops and support the soldiers and the veterans. Uh, but I don't think many people often automatically associate really the sacrifices that, you know, their internal families might be making. Um, and when we were looking for a foundation to represent for the Country Rock for a Cause, uh, they really stood out. A, their efficiency on the dollar and what they're able to do with the money they raise, uh, and B, the programs they have in place. Um, it's really based uh, around protecting and, and making sure the families of our soldiers are, are safe and comfortable in their financial situation, uh, so that our folks who are overseas really don't have anything to worry about back home. Um, uh, our boys and girls who are you know, overseas serving the military really should be focusing on the job at hand. Um, and hopefully the MMF provides them with a lot of peace of mind knowing that their families will be taken care of, whether it's um, short money out for a utility bill or keeping the lights on or whether they need some assistance with groceries, putting food on the table. Uh, programs like that are really what the MMFF are all about. Right, and it's a lot of stuff that, you know, we take for granted, but when your loved one is overseas, fighting on our behalf, right. you know, there's a lot that goes on in a home that can fall through the cracks Absolutely. when you're a single parent taking care of kids and things like that. So it's a great cause. How much did you guys raise? Sure. So uh, this year we raised five thousand three hundred dollars. Awesome. On our first go at it, yeah. That and it was a lot of work. It was a big event. Talk it was. about the bands and and what happened that day. Yeah, you know, it actually. You, you mentioned the Breathe Easy Music Festival. I really got inspired from from Rob who put that on. Um, this festival really started in our backyard originally and, and instead of really having a, a housewarming party we moved into our home we decided hey let's get some buddies get some beer and, and just try to do a fundraiser and since then it's obviously evolved and after playing at the Breathe Easy Festival I, I kind of saw Rob's vision what he did with the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation and and uh, it challenged me to, to continue to grow it and try to make an impact and so this year we we found a venue and partnered with the Caboose um, and lined up 10 bands who all volunteered and donated their time to come and perform and uh, you know, really put a, our best foot forward to really grow the event, spread the message, and uh, get a big turnout, and raise some money. And I think we, I think we were pretty successful in it for our first year, moving it from what is a backyard gathering to now a full-fledged music festival. Absolutely. And I mean, every time we're friends on Facebook, yep. and every time I'm looking, you're. 
constantly involved in some kind <laughs> of a charitable event, which is really great. But why? Why? It's a lot of your time. It is. It is. Uh, I feel privileged to be able to do it. That's really the perspective I have. Um, you know, I have a voice. I play music. Things I'm very passionate. And I love. And uh, you know, my wife, and my friends are supportive of all my crazy ventures. And, and to be giving back is really what makes it worthwhile. Um, you know, being able to use any talent that I have or any skills I might have to hopefully help out a cause or support others is something that I'm extremely passionate about. And at the end of the day, that's that's really what matters most to me. Yeah, and the best news is, is you're one incredible musician, singer, <laughs> songwriter. You just came out with a new album. We did. Tell us about that. Yeah, we released a, a really our debut record. Um, we did an EP last summer, kind of a short, more of a demo. This time we really went to the studio and, and hammered out a professional record called Living Free. And that was released on July 7th. It's on iTunes and all digital outlets, and you can still get the old-fashioned CDs off our website or at a show. Um, and it's something we're really proud about. We wrote everything on the record. Everyone in the band came in the studio and performed on it, um, and it's uh, it's something I'm very proud about. And the music's yeah. spreading around, and people seem to be responding to it, and, and we're thrilled. You have, I mean, your band is quite large. There's like seven people seven, in yeah. it, and you guys really rock it out. It's, <laughs> It's such a great mix. I mean, you got your country sound, mm -hmm. you got your rock sound, you got, yep. what, you know, describe the flavor, what you're going for with the band. Yeah. Just having fun? Well, definitely. <laughs> you got to have fun. If it's not fun, it's not we're doing it. Um, that's that's rule number one. Uh, you know, I grew up in Georgia. Uh, my biggest musical influence was bands like Allman Brothers Band. And, and to me, they kind of epitomize that country influence with rock and blues and even a little bit of uh, a jam band mentality. And we'd really try to capture that, but still putting our own spin on it. Um, you know, we don't want to copy anybody, right. but we definitely draw heavily on, on that type of instrumentation. And uh, it's fun having seven people in a band. You, everyone gets their time to shine through and we play off each other's dynamics and um, it it's yeah. surely creates a full sound. Well, I know you've had a very busy summer and, and you'll have a busy fall. Where can people find out more about what when the band, the Plot Hounds, is going to perform and where and yeah. how they can keep up with you guys? Absolutely. I'd say first and foremost, take a look at on Facebook for us. and. Uh, facebook.com slash the plot hounds and that's uh, two t's p-l-o-t-t -T, and then hounds and then um, you can also go to our website which is the plot hounds.com both of those will have all of our tour dates and information and updates or anything we got going on yeah well thank you noah for all your hard work yeah. and effort on in so many great causes that you put your effort towards and we know you're going to do great your music is awesome i've heard you perform your, you, you guys are great thank you. and this is a great tribute this is what you're doing a lot of that hard work for i mean these stones have segments from or little sayings from letters that mm -hmm. are from some of the soldiers over the years way back in the 1800s to current day here's one says happy birthday we'll send you a telegram from ship when we are due in new york it just puts some reality into what happens with these families and their loved ones that they you know may or may not come back so Absolutely. you know we thank you for your help and uh look forward to hearing you perform in the near future i appreciate it thank All you right. Judy. A great guy and a great band. Check out the Plot Hounds for a rockin' good time and check out some other great bands performing during this year's Breathe Easy Music Festival benefiting the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. It's all happening on October 10th at Mill City Nights and features Hairball along with 14 other musical performances on two stages. Go to breathetoday.org for tickets and more information. That's all the time we have for today. Join me in October for more great local stories. And as always, I do thank you for watching Local Image.